I was incredibly impressed by the search committee. The faculty on the search committee, the alumni on the search committee, they dealt with me in a way that was, you know, I would say warm and respectful uh, and really worked with me in a way that immediately impressed me about the whole school, that this was really the ethos of, of the school, was really, that there really was a real human element to it. And that held true. I interviewed as a dean candidate, came to campus, met faculty, staff, students, uh, and it was very consistent. There was a real sense of community at the school, uh, a real sense that it is a small law school, which is a great strength. The student body, there's roughly 150 students in each class. That's a wonderful feature. Uh, many law schools, my first teaching job was at the University of Texas, uh, which is a wonderful experience and a great school, but there were 500 students in a class, and that's a very different experience. So one of the really unique things at Mercer is that students can really be part of a community uh, in a way in which they can't at most other law schools. In terms of what really intrigued me at Mercer, I think there's, I mean, it's, it's a really unusual curriculum at the school, uh, the Woodruff curriculum, which I think is really, was very innovative when it was adopted. I think it's still innovative. I think they've been ahead of the, ahead of the curve uh, for quite some time. And if you look at some of these reports, the Carnegie report, uh, it's clear that, that Law schools are being urged to go in directions that Mercer really uh, started going in uh, 15 years ago, if not more. Uh, I love their focus on ethics and professionalism. I think that's something that more than ever, we really need to have law schools uh, inculcating in students a real appreciation for the importance of ethics, and not just the rules, but a, a real sense of ethics that goes beyond just particular rules. Uh, the professionalism, what does it mean to be a lawyer? Uh, but I think that kind of leadership, almost you know, moral leadership in a way, is something if they don't get it in law school, it's, it's not going to happen. I think it really offers a unique opportunity. Uh, one is the kind of training in think, thinking seriously about ethics and professionalism that I think really should be a model for schools across the country. Uh, and I think students ought to be able to appreciate, given some of the new, what happens in the news today, uh, about the importance of graduating and having a real sense of ethics and being leaders in, in society. I think the skills development here is a great strength of the law school. Uh, that has been mentioned in the, in the McCrate report, uh, in the Carnegie report, uh, and Mercer has really been ahead of the curve in terms of that kind of development. Our legal writing program here is one of the best known in the country, actually been ranked first uh, among writing programs, and, and that's as important as anything to being a good, being a good attorney. Uh, the, there are various other areas, the uh, coherence of the strategic plan that Mercer has developed. I think really, I don't know that students are going to read this, the strategic plan, but I think that I would talk to them about it, that, that it really has an integrity and a coherence that really would help them see how graduating here will really serve them well the strategic plan is aimed largely at the thought that people will be graduating to work in small firms, mid-sized firms, uh, but if you read it, it's very clear that it's intended in serving sort of that core group to also serve the whole range of students, whether they're going into public interest, whether they're going to be in large firms, it all works well. So uh, interdisciplinary work, global perspective, that's a basic part which you, might not be the first thing you think about when you think, well, I'm going to a small or mid-sized firm, but in today's world, it ought to be. So I think it's a great law school. The, the teaching quality is very high, uh, and they're really innovative. 
Uh, everyone has really been innovative in an important way. It's a, it's a really first-class faculty. I grew up in New Jersey. I was actually born in uh, Newark uh, and grew up initially. I was in Newark for a few years, then moved to one of the suburbs of Newark when Newark was big enough to have suburbs. Now, now I don't think it, it quite is. It's gotten a, it's a smaller city now. Uh, went to the public high school in, it was Springfield, uh, New Jersey is where I grew up. And, uh, you know, it was a good public high school. It wasn't terrific. Uh, I would say going to college was kind of a, a shock. Um, my high school, my recollection was we had no papers, you know, so that when you go to college and they say write a paper in English, um, I didn't even know what a paper was. So my first experience, my first semester in college felt pretty overwhelming. Uh, it was really when Yale was sort of in the transition from having predominantly private school students to having more public school students. Uh, but a lot of the students were really had preparation that I didn't have. But I had great teachers, and they were patient. My first semester, I had a terrific English teacher who, my first paper, I still remember, he tore to shreds. But he was very receptive to working with me. And you know, thankfully, I made pretty good progress. And, Loved it. I mean, college was really, was really an exciting time. I really had not been, you know, I guess I'd been pretty sheltered growing up in, you know, just a suburb in New Jersey and really was exposed to things. My, my roommate, I had one roommate, uh, he was from Kansas City uh, and was about 10 times more sophisticated than me. Uh, and that was great. And we ended up really becoming fast friends. Uh, we stayed together as roommates for four years. Uh, he was the best man at my wedding. I was the best man at his a number of years later. So it was a, it was a really terrific experience. In terms of why I went to, to law school, I think really I, a lot of it was the era maybe in which I was in college. You know, it was a, it was a real time. It was the late 60s, early 70s, and it was a real time of social ferment, political ferment. I mean, the civil rights movement was re really gathered steam, student movement, the women's movement, the anti-war movement. Uh, and a lot of it really made me think a lot about you know, contributing to society and contributing to really progress, but orderly progress. And, and that really naturally leads to law school. So I certainly came there with the sense that I really wanted to do something that would make a positive contribution to society and really move forward, I think, a lot of these, these areas in which there was really exciting development, uh, ranging, as I say, from civil rights to, um, to various other areas. And that led to my interest in constitutional law. I, think I, I really love music. That's certainly a big, a big interest of mine. Uh, not the most highbrow interest in music, although I think it's a very good interest. Uh, I play guitar uh, and harmonica. I'm from the era that you would play guitar, harmonica, sing, uh, and largely folk, folk rock. Mm -hmm. And those are probably the concerts. And my daughter, who's here in the room at the moment, she and I go to a lot of concerts together. My wife goes to some with us, but we, we have gone to quite a few. So music is a, big, is a big interest. In terms of the musician who I like the most, it's pretty clear, uh, Bob Dylan. So I'm a very, very diehard Dylan fan. I've been to more Dylan concerts than I would want to admit the number. I, I can give you a sense of it. My daughter and I, who've gone to concerts a lot together, she's 18 now, and she's been to 10 Dylan concerts. So um, I certainly, he's probably number one, but I really like a wide diversity of people. I love the fact that Macon is really got, you know, great musical history. Uh, I was sorry the last time I was here, I saw there was the annual Blind Willie McTell uh, Folk Festival, uh, or this Blues Festival, but I arrived a day after it. But I'm really looking forward to that.
I think a dean has a lot of different roles. I mean, it's, it's I think, why it's an interesting job. Uh, it appeals to me a lot, I think, because of its diversity. Uh, one thing you are is you're, you know, you're the leader of the faculty. Uh, and in that sense, one, you try to build consensus in the faculty for positive change in the school. Uh, I think you have to be listening to people and really working with people's ideas to the extent you sort of have a sense about where the school ought to go. Uh, you really need to have the faculty fully on board. So I think the dean's role is certainly to promote positive change, uh, but to work with the faculty uh, in getting there and, and to really getting, getting a genuine consensus within the faculty. Uh, I think the dean's role with the students is critical. I wrote an article uh, that basically was why deans ought to teach. Uh, I think deans really are, in a way, the face of the school, even to the students. Uh, that they really look at, you know, what kind of institution is this? Is it a friendly institution? Is it worried about me? I think the dean serves an important function uh, in that regard. Uh, the central university, uh, the dean is really sort of the, the link to the other colleges. Uh, and one thing that's a big centerpiece, really, for Mercer is interdisciplinary education. The provost is clearly very eager to promote that. It's something I've done a lot of work on when I was an associate dean at Cornell. And as dean, that's something you're really in a position to establish connections between the colleges uh, of the university. Uh, you're the face of the law school to alumni. Uh, that's, I, I was dean at Case Western Reserve. That was a part of the job I almost felt you shouldn't be paid for. Uh, it was just such a really, you know, it was a joy to do it, to really meet people, so many different vocations that people follow after law school. Uh, and as dean, you make the connection with them uh, and I think really keep them involved in the school. It's a two-way conversation, not just you, know, you speaking to them, but these are people who can really bring a lot to the school. Uh, they're you know, very astute business people, leaders of different sorts. Uh, and one thing I did at Case Western Reserve was to really make a lot of use of alumni in advising me about the school, ways in which the school really could better serve the profession. So I think the dean has a lot of roles. Maybe the baseline role is you're, you have to be almost a cheerleader for the school. You have to be the person who's really positive about the school. Otherwise, how can you expect other people to?